Hi everyone, my name is Sharif. Ever felt like programming is a very difficult field to enter and it's something that's very complex? What if I've told you that programming is actually quite easy to enter and very accessible to anyone nowadays? So in this video, I'll show you how to write your very first line of code, even if this is your very first time. So at the end of this video, you're able to write your very first line of code and start your programming journey. Exciting, isn't it? Let's go. Now, before we jump and write your first line of code, I think it's good for you to have an understanding what is programming is all about. I'll give you a very simple definition of what is programming. Programming is an act of giving a set of instructions to computer to execute to achieve a certain task or objective. Now let's divide this sentence into three different parts. The first part is giving set of instructions. The second part is computer to execute. And the third is to achieve objectives or a certain task. So a set of instructions is like giving a command or an how to step by step to achieve something. Usually instruction is being written in English, but for the case of programming, it is being written in programming language. The second part of the definition is computer to execute. Now, who is going to do the set of instructions? So for our case, it's the computers, right? Now, why wanna give a set of instructions to computer in the first place? The reason being we wanna achieve something, an objective, or we wanna complete a certain task. And that's where the third part of the sentence come from. So easy, right? Essentially, you wanna give a set of instructions to computer to execute or to achieve a certain objective. Okay, so now you have the understanding what is programming by definition. Let's start with uh, getting your first line of code. But before we write our very first line of code, there's one more thing that we should do is we should decide what programming language we want to use. Now, a lot of people think that when you pick a language, it's very difficult to learn other language. In fact, that is not true because actually all these programming languages carry the same fundamental concept, right? So if you pick a language, learn the concept, master it, it's kind of very transferable to different um, programming languages. So if you learn Python, you can learn Java or JavaScript or any other languages. But the most important thing that you need to have is a good understanding about the concept. So don't be scared if you pick a language, just go for it, learn and practice a lot because if you decide to move on to a different language, it's actually quite easy and not that difficult. The only difference is in terms of the syntax, the grammar. So don't be so scared. So now you know that choosing language is not that difficult. You can just pick whichever you want. But for this video, I'm going to use Python, partly because it's easy to use, quite forgiving, I must say, compared to Java. And the error is quite readable. So if you have any problem with your code, it'll pop up an error and it's quite uh, easy to debug what the error is. Okay, so now we have understand what is programming and we also now um, have decided what is the first language they're going to use, which is Python. Now we can start. So now we can open our laptop. Okay, so in order for us to write, we need to actually have a development environment. Now you can either set it locally in your own laptop or using an online editor. So let's just jump right into uh, using an online editor because it's hassle-free. You just click, click, and you are ready to learn programming. So open your browser. I'm going to search for a website called REPL.IT, right? So Reply is an online editor, which is free. All you need to do is to use your account, to set up an account, and you're good to go. So you just want to click into sign up for free. But for my case, I already signed up. You can do it. It's quite easy and fast. So I'm just going to connect to my GitHub account. Okay, once you're in this website, you want to click create REPL. We want to create development environment. Now I want to choose Python here. So you can type P-Y-T-H-O-N, Python, click it, and then you can name anything that you want. I'm just going to say first code here, and I'm just going to click create REPL. Okay, so you're going to be brought up into this page where in the middle is your code editor, which you can edit your code here. And on your right side, you want to focus on the console, not the AI stuff. So you'll see whichever output from your code can be seen here. And the left side is your file directory, which we won't be touching at all in this video. Now, I'm going to write a very simple code and I think you can kind of get an idea what, what it does. So if I say print, this is your first line of code. And if I click run, we are going to see at the right side, it's saying this is your first line of code. Now, I think you might have an idea what is happening here. So what does this code do is actually to print in the terminal, in the console, this line of text, or we call it as a string. See, it's quite simple. You kind of can read what is code do. So let me give you a different example, a bit complex. So I'm going to write a code where given a set of number, we are going to calculate the average of the number. Now, before we dive in into our code, let's talk about how we do average as in like mathematically the form, all right? Let's say we have a set of numbers. Let's say five, four, three, two, one, for example. 
And the way how we want to get the average of these numbers is the first step is we want to add all of this number, right? That's the first step on if we want to find the average, which we can get 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is actually equals to 15. Now, after we get the total, we have to divide by the number of numbers, right? So in this case, we have um, five numbers. So it's 15 divided by five, which the average of this number is going to be three. So that is as in like mathematically the formula on calculating the average. Now we are going to basically give the instruction to this computer on how to calculate the average. So I'm going to show you, I'm not going to explain the code yet. I'm just going to write it out and try to make sense out of it, right? To give you an idea. So what I'm going to do is first make a list of the numbers that we're going to add. So say number, number, list, okay? You're going to have five, four, three, two, one. And then we're going to make a, a, a variable of data called a sum number, which is the sum of the numbers. We're going to start with a zero. Now you might have a lot of questions at this point, but just look at it, okay? So we go for loop four, let's say the num, num this, I'm going to be adding the sum by, I'm going to get the current uh, value of the sum and add the current number in the iteration and going to save it in the sum of the numbers. And then once I have the sum of all the numbers, I'm going to divide by the length of the numbers. So we have the average will be equals to the sum of the numbers, sorry, the sum of the numbers divide by the length of the numbers. Right, and then once I have the average, I'm going to print out the value. Okay, right. So let's test this code if this is correct. So we are expecting the average from these values to be three. So let's run this. See, we got the uh, number three. So what I have achieved here is I wrote a set of instructions to the computer to calculate the average given the set of numbers, where I can tweak this number to whichever I want. I can say it's to be four and probably 10. And if we run this, We'll get a different number, an average of some sort is 4.6667 or um, let's say 11 here, some sort of number. But essentially, this is an average from the number of this. See? So let me run through you briefly about what each line of these do. So first, we declare the number they want to, you know, find the average of, which is, let's just put this back to 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 here. And then we set a counter to calculate the sum of all these numbers. So we start with zero. And there's a reason why we want to start with zero. So bear with me, okay? So what is happening here, here, we are actually iterating to each of the numbers in this list. So for each of the numbers in this list, what we want to do is we need to sum it. So currently, the sum num is actually equal to zero. So this value is zero. And the first number in this list, which is the num, is five. So what happened is actually it's five plus zero. So the first iteration of the sum num is going to be equal to five. Next iteration is actually the sum num, which is five plus four. And it becomes nine. And it will just go on, it will iterate to the end of the number. And finally, after it has completed the iteration of all the numbers, it's going to get the sum num to be equal to 15. So now the next step is calculating the average of the sum num, which is 15, divided by the length of the list of this num list, which is the length it contains five numbers. So it will be 15 divided by five, which is equal to three. So the average is three. Now, of course, it looks very simple because I was explaining it, but actually there's a lot of um, things that you don't know about. But at least I've shown you how to write your very first line of code and you actually can just start learning, right? Because now you have the environment and now all you need to do is start learning the concept. This is more enough for you to start learning um, about programming with this online editor. So it's very accessible to everyone to use a replit. Congratulations, you're actually able to write your very first line of code. You know, it's actually quite easy when you see, when you think about it, right? Um, you now have your own online editor, a place where you can actually learn how to code. Now, what is the next steps? Now, there's a lot of, you know, videos on YouTube that you could learn, right? Where if you type learn programming, there's already thousands and thousands of videos showing you, demonstrating you all the concepts and how to do it. And you can just learn by it. But if you're not someone who would like to listen and look on YouTube channels, you want something hands-on, like some sort of exercise, you can try a website like Code Academy, Scrimba, free code camp because they have um, guides, exercises that you can do. So either from learning, you also have exercises and project. But if you want to support, you want someone to guide you, you, know, you want to have a tutor, a dedicated tutor you can ask because you know the first tutor I mentioned, you don't have really have uh, a good amount of support. Then you can try bootcamp. 
which I suggest Sigma School. Now, Sigma School is a three month bootcamp where you'll become a full stack developer or a data scientist by the end of the bootcamp. And also at the end, you'll be able to build a real life project. Now, to be good in programming, you actually need to build a project and having a project can boost your understanding programming and also boost your job prospect actually. And of course, if you're someone who wants to transition from your old job to a, probably a software or in the IT field, then this is a good bootcamp because they offer job support and also career preparation. So not just a place to learn, you also be groomed to be someone that is every, very capable in the job market. So if you're quite scared that this bootcamp is going to waste off your money, don't worry. If you're not able to get a job, but at one point, they're going to give you back your money, 100% money guarantee. So don't be scared. I'll link to you a video, uh, a past student project in the school, also some podcast talking about, you know, learning and getting into software development. All right, I hope that helps. I hope you're quite excited to be able to actually write your very first line of code and I'll wish you the best. Um, it's going to be a, quite a tough journey because you're going to be going into something that is you're not familiar with, but trust me, it's going to be a very rewarding experience and I'll wish you all the best. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.